Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are going to carry on with our stitching of the little pocket for the inside cover. So we've made a nice deep pocket that will be embellished and then should be able to be used to put in some, I'm thinking an ephemera style envelope journal that can have butterflies and flowers and things like that stuffed into the so that she can use that to decorate so I needed a pocket that was fairly deep because I want to use the envelopes I showed you in the last video so you don't want them sort of it falling out I hope this is deep enough. I guess if we find that it's not, I can always add another piece of fabric behind this to extend it a little. But I think it will be. I'll, I'll test it before I stitch it onto that piece that is going to be on the inside, that big piece of calico. I will, um, I'll test it. And I might grab one of those ones that are pre-made because they're going to be about the thickness. But I think it'll be all right. I think, I think it will be okay. Okay, so a bit of an overcast stitch there. That'll stop all that from fraying made it quite rustic meaning that none of the stitches are even which shows the young lady that you don't have to be perfect when it comes to slow stitch it's just about stitching okay now we might come along this bottom here next i think and secure that little piece of lemon fabric down Okay, that's looking good. That's not going to go anywhere. Then we'll have to see what else we can do to it. Embellish our little pocket. Have to have a think about what we're going to use around the embroidery. I think it'll be just a running stitch and maybe we pull out a pink or a blue again that we used on the cover. I think those are still sitting here. Okay. Gosh, this just takes time, doesn't it? But I'd rather be doing this <clears throat> than anything else because it takes my mind off everything. Helps me to relax. You can hear fudge bellowing in the garage. I don't know if you can hear that. A bit of attitude. Okay, just knotting this off now. So that's all of the satin edges secured with a whip stitch so that they don't fray. So I'm happy with that. Yep, that's good. And the other ones are underneath there, so they're not gonna they're not gonna fray. So let's just fold up this fabric a little bit because that is hiding my hello fudge what 
adventure story, Pussycat. So let's have a look at these threads and see. I think I want to use the blue. So I'm thinking a running stitch <clears throat> around. Hello, Fudgy. What's the matter, Fudge? Okay, so let's just run that along that edge. That's good. Hey, pussy. What you doing, pussy cat? Why are you so chatty? Here it comes. Oh, sorry, everyone. Fudgy, what's the matter? Why were you bellowing? Hey? Why were you bellowing? He's going to knock that camera with his tail. Here he comes. Let's move this fabric. I really don't want you sitting on that fabric. I'm going to move my... That's better. There we go. Fudge is just sitting to the side here on the table. <coughs> So what's your story, Fudge? What have you got to say to everyone? You certainly had something to say in the garage. I heard you bellowing. Hey? Hey? You're awfully quiet now. Have you been outside? What are all the insects in the garden doing today? Hey. Sitting on the fence post watching the neighbours come and go. Is that what you've been doing? There's some pigeons in a tree in the garden nesting. Have they got babies yet? Hey. Fudgy just sits and watches all these things happen. He's never really been much of a hunter that I know of. I'm sure. Oh, there's been the odd mouse, but we'll forgive him for that. We'll let him go on the mouses. Hey, you don't mind bringing a mouse in. You never seem to eat the mouse. Oh, he's off. You never seem to eat the mouse. He just brings it in and drops it at my feet and says, there you go, Mum, one mouse, and then walks away. And he, like, flicks his paw as if to go, oh, the dirtiness of it. Oh, oh. dirty little mouse. He's off. Well, the other thing he catches is geckos. Oh, horrible little lizardy looking things they are. They they get inside the house and they defecate and oh. And they're not even the Australian gecko. They're the one that's come down from Indonesia, so they're technically a pest. And they just breed the little Aussie gecko. He's got a very dark, spotty sort of look about him. Where the Indonesian pest, Casper's here now, and they're sort of sizing each other up for a swipe. Fudgy, move on. Yeah, the Indonesian gecko is a real creamy grey colour. And he makes this clicking sound. So he's not only dirty, because he's a fairly big gecko. Well, probably as big as that. But he's a noisy gecko, so they sort of make this chirping sound. And once you get them in your house, it's very hard to get rid of them because they sort of sit behind cam uh, not cameras, photos on the wall, and you sort of they come out at night, run a muck. But the Aussie gecko, you don't see them much because once the Indonesian gecko sort of gets into the area, the Aussie one is pushed out. So, but they're more of a bush dwelling animal. These Indonesian ones, they're house dwelling. They sort of like hanging around our lights. 
and eating the bugs that come to the lights at night. Okay, all right, so that's now stitched down. Okay, so let's have a look at our little piece. What else can we add to it? Should we pop some lace on there? I'm not digging that lace. Um, I did like that on there, but not so much now. Is it because it's too big? Oh, I don't mind that. I like how it's giving me that triangular shape. Yeah, what the hang? I'm going to stitch that down. not what I was expecting to stitch down but I like it so it will be I'll just pop a pin in it so it doesn't move okay we're away I wish I had the word, um, oh, I know what we could add. Oh, I've got some, some sayings stamped on uh, fabric. And I think one of them is let's make art or something like that. I might dig them out because we could pop a few of them even on the cover. Some words, some inspirational words, and just whip stitch, stitch them down. Let's do this first, Corinne. Stay focused. Get this down, and then I'm going to grab those words and see what's in there. <coughs> And they're just um, stamps that I've collected that I've stamped then using black ink onto some calico. And yeah, I just pop them around in journals. A few inspirational words. So we've got ourselves now a patchwork pocket. Love it. Lots of texture, different elements. Nice and colourful, nice and random. I know I'm usually matchy-matchy, but this is forcing me to be a little bit more random with my pieces because kids very rarely will be matchy matchy like thinking about design element that's just more freedom I guess in their creativity I might just scoot down I've got a bit of thread left so I'm just going to come down on the diagonal through the center of this little piece just to make sure it's nicely caught Okay. Lovely. Oops. All right, let's just end that off then. Might even put a piece of lace on the top edge of the pocket, but coming from underneath. That'd be cute. Just a Increase the size of the pocket a little bit. 
height-wise, like have something, not this lace, but something coming a lot off the top of it. Okay, so let's grab those words. I just want to have a little look at it. <clears throat> just to see if there's anything there that we could use. Yeah, there's a make art. Got some Christmas ones, see? Make art. I like the idea of that. Yeah, we're going to stitch that down. We're going to use pink. Then we're going to rummage in that little pile a little bit more and maybe find something that could go on the front cover. That's why I wasn't keen to glue that front club cover down to that bag yet and make it permanent because... Um, Things will come along that will go, oh, that might look good there. I think I can um, I think I can glue the inside to the bag. I sort of need to do that to work out my pages. I sort of need to start that process. Oops, what have I done? Oh, well, we're having two threads, not three. Must have not knotted that third thread. So we're just going to do a running stitch. Right through. Catch that down. I feel like I'm getting all the colors out of my system with this project. The Tim Holtz project and the William Morris project had a certain feel about them and the colours, which I love. But this one feels like it's just pure joy. It's like crazy colours and crazy combinations, like just let it let it go, you know. Feels good making this one. For some reason, it feels good. Okay, that's that little element stitched on. Just finish that thread off. Right, very cute. Now, what else have we got in here that might a sprinkle of imagination? Got a lot of Christmas. Joy, dare to dream, believe. You are capable of amazing things. That's a good one for a young girl. That's got potential. Oh, some little mushrooms, a little bird, a key, some leaves, believe. A little owl, a pussy cat, 15 cents. Would a pussy cat fit somewhere on our thing? He's a bit cute. He might be a bit big. All right, let's have a little look. Let's get rid of these snippety pits before we go and get ourselves in a hang of a mess. We don't need 15 cents. Um, a pin. Just need a pin just to keep that a little bit organized. Get rid of that and that. Need to hang on to our little crocheted heart till it finds a home. All right, now let's 
just bring this cover back. I don't know. I don't think we'll get Pussycat in. Having said that, what if Pussycat was part of the enclosure? Not enclosure, closure. So that pocket is defining our sizing because that's in there. Give or take a bit. Um, we've now got this coming over. I've got that selvage there, which I had intended on cutting off, but I may not yet. I wonder if we can stitch him on as part of the enclosure. Let's think about this. So what would it look like on the other side? Well, we can certainly patch some fabric there and do something. And then, uh, I'm liking that, guys. That might just be the piece. I'm not using the heart, but... All right, let's think about this. I need some backing fabric under it. Just to strengthen it. So we will use calico again. I'm thinking. Okay, but I want to have some fabric. I want that all frayed so it's nice and messy. We're making a cat, cat inspired enclo uh, closure. So I think if I stitch around that so that cat is in position and we might use the blue might use all of the six threads so that it's nice and chunky so I'm going to need a big eye Now to tie it all together, I think we need some patches on it, like we've been doing. Maybe this stripe could be worked into it somehow. Maybe the stripe could then even go round and come onto the back as part of what we need to do to decorate the back of it. So let's say it's attached there and then another piece of fabric. Maybe this is in the back here and that then comes around. I don't know if I like that. Maybe we do this this little piece. So if this was on the back as part of the let's cut the fabric where it's most useful and not just hack into another straight edge of this fabric would be advisable. So this is this is like a piece that will come into the back of the journal helping to anchor it all down. Does that make sense? I'm not convinced that this will even happen, but I think it'd be interesting. 
Oh, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. Sorry, guys. So that piece there will be stitched once the back, let's say this is our, oh, you know what I've done. Oh, look what I've done. I've taken the corner out of this piece of calico, which is for the inside of the journal. My goodness me. So I'm going to need another piece. See, I got all excited about what I was doing here and I, I jiggered it up. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Once we get all of our little decorative elements done, yeah, it'll be it'll be fine. So that will go on the back and form part of the tab. And this little piece, just as a bit of a feature, will come around onto the cat on the front okay let's get these elements out of our way before i go and chop into them and ruin them like i just did so i think i'm going to stitch with invisible stitch first this onto there but not going all the way to the edge so that it can be lifted up and slid onto the back cover it'll all make sense soon guys so let's just hide our knot in the back here but I'm going to stitch this together. Invisible stitch this side, big stitches the other side, and the cat will cover that. Does that make sense? But at least these two will be together. This is like a tab. So... We will need to leave the one side open. I'll just do down here so that now is all secured I think this was the right step to do the only issue is pussycat's gonna have a ring of blue around him And it's going to show through, isn't it? So maybe I've got to... Will that matter? Well, we'll soon see. It's really tricky working out what's the right uh, order to do things in when you've got double-sided. Because sooner or later your stitches are going to be seen. So at least our fabric is now backed. And I might be able to stitch it so that my blue stitching that's going around the cat doesn't actually come through to the other side. I probably made it harder for me than I needed to, but anyway. So that's the open edge that will attach. So pussycat's going on here. And 
we're going to stitch a running stitch around the cat. <clears throat> I might just draw myself some lines. Why make it hard on myself and be crooked? And at least if I have a bit of a line, I don't have to think I can just whip around the cat. Okay. And that will be down here as a bit of a decorative element if, if, if we're so inclined. So let's, I'm just bringing the needle up between the layers and I'm hoping I can slip stitch. Yep. Nope, 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 nope. Does it matter? What's it going to do? It's going to bring a nice blue rectangle to that side, of which maybe we can do something with on the other side. So does it really matter? Let's have a little look. So I haven't made it easy on myself. Yeah, I like it. It certainly matches. It's going to be a decorative element. And then maybe we can add something that side just to sort of build on it. Let's just keep going because it'll make that inside when it flips open the journal have something interesting as well. Otherwise, it just would have been a plain piece of fabric. So we'll see. We'll see where this goes. As we whip around the pussy cat. There's Pepper. Hubby must be getting himself together because Pepper's just appeared at the window again if to say, Dad's coming. Breakfast time. I'll trim that fabric back there a little bit when we're ready. That's peeking through from the other side, but it doesn't really matter because it's not going to be... Hang on a minute. I can't do this. No, I can't do this because I need this to be separated so that it sits. Okay. Okay. Back to square one. Sorry guys, we need to think this through a little bit. I think I actually need to top stitch this cat completely separate. And I think my fabrics need to be separated completely. And then I do the little invisible stitches to join them to some degree. Oh, I just wasted 30 minutes of your time, guys. Sorry about that. But it is what it is. We've got a technical issue to overcome, which makes this awfully fun. Now I'm really making a mess. I'm trying to unpick this and salvage my cotton. Okay. I'm going to try and running stitch down there without catching the back because I think I can. I was just being a little lazy, I think. So let's just sneak that into there and there. Now 
no worries. Now we've got something happening. Okay. This pussycat, if you're wondering, is part of the delusions, delusions range of stamps. Don't think it's Dana Wakely. It's Dana. Just can't see the pack from here, but I will show you if it's something you wanted to hunt out. I believe it is still available. Oops, we need to be catching that fabric as well. There's all sorts of great stamps in her range. I just can't think of her name. She often has brightly dyed red hair. She's English. She seems like the sweetest lady. She's in the Ranger group, the big American house where they bring in designers and produce their products for them. So she has um, uh, Midori style journals that you can purchase and stamps and inks and yeah heaps and I'm sure it's the lady I'm thinking there's two within the group that I tend to buy bits and pieces from I've had the stamps a few years so whether they're out there still that's always a bit of a trick when you start pulling out you know bits and pieces from your stash are they still available alrighty now we've got this cornered my stitches are hidden it's made quite a nice piece I'm happy with this Okay, so I'm just going to whip around that bottom. And I'll have to come up with a, a tie, like a piece of ribbon or something quite strong because it's going to get handled a lot. Maybe I actually have to make something out of fabric so that way I know it's not going to degrade. Like I could use some um, sari silk, but it tends to just disintegrate in your hands if you're too tight and rough with it. I could use seam binding, but that too eventually becomes a bit tatty looking. So I'm thinking maybe we make a tie that is strong for a child. Got plenty of fabric here and we just sort of patch something together and I might need my sewing machine to stitch it all so there's pussycat so let's just clear the deck here a bit I know I want to put those stripes on somehow so let's bring back let's bring back our cover so that will come over pussycat will be attached to that and then the tie element will come out as well and that will be under there so that it's yeah that's how it'll go I might just pin that and I'll check measurements and things because we're getting very close, I think, to attaching all of these pieces to our cover. Yeah, I like that. And I'll probably just invisible stitch that along there just to hold it. Now, where were these scraps? I wanted to bring, just for element of design, for no other use, wanted to bring that around that corner and maybe do a little bit of stitching 
So let's just pin it for now. And then when we get to this side, we can have a little look at what we can do to decorate this side. Maybe I bring in another doily. Because this fabric from the back will come in here to meet it, which I've chopped. Goodness me. Let's just unpin that a fraction. That will sit under there. Does that make sense? It makes sense. If we don't like it, we don't have to use it, but I think it's going to work. So that's our tab on the inside and then a pussycat on there will be our tie point. All right. Okay, what will we do next? Let's just keep working on this tab because I think it will work. Yep. Just need to keep all those edges open for now because we need to yeah, get it all, you know, glued into position. I wonder if I can do a little I might rip this down a little bit and stitch it on. I sort of I'm going to embellish this a little bit more. So where's my cream thread? Or do I use pink? I might use cream for this and pink for the words. So I can sneak in there and put some stitches through. There's a lot of layers there now, so I've sort of got somewhere and there's not the, um, the necessary construction stitches needed. You know, when you're building the piece itself, this is just decorative, sneaky little stitches to go in there just to add a little extra element of something so we can come through that layer that's good and then we can carry on out there and that can just be invisible stitched down when we're ready. So I guess I need to check how much of the stripe we need this side. I will use all of it. I could, I can't stitch that down, can I? it's hanging out in midair it's not actually doing anything to the journal that side so I'm gonna re stitch that and actually catch there's a pin I'm actually going to catch that floral fabric yep because I'm pretty sure I can Oh, I've gone through the pussycat. Settle down. Don't be stitching the cat. We don't want to see the stitches on the other side. We just want to slither through those fabrics like so. I 
It's just really a, a little decorative piece on this side. And slithering through, yep, catching floral fabric only. Lovely. Okay, now we can turn the corner here. Um, working with a quite a big needle and it's not the sharpest needle but it's got such a good eye on it for this type of thread this crochet cotton it just feels like I'm working with I just need to close my door for a moment guys might be a second husband's on his way to the kitchen and he will start banging and bashing and making toast okay yep that's good so now I'm coming back to the spine maybe our tabs that we put on our pages in the journal we might make sure that this stripey fabric is part of it, just to sort of tie it in together. I think it'll look rather cool. I've got plenty of it because it's an old pillar slip. It's the inside of the pillar slip. There we go. So we're back. So now I can just knot that off underneath there so it's not seen. All right. Now, I really like the idea of this. That might get a bit of a trim. Not that it really matters because it'll be. Yeah, no, that's that's good. So. I'm going to just stitch that on there, just as a little sentiment. The only thing is, I'll say, is that hasn't stamped real well. I wonder if we could do a better job, guys. Now I'm going to put this sparkle of imagination away. I'm going to grab the stamps. Bear with me. And I'm going to stamp that again. <clears throat> um, and I was going to grab that's the that's where the cat come from. Delusions. Dana Waverley. That's the pussy cat there. If you were wondering and wanted to go looking. Now the stamps with these sayings are from Dark Door Sentiment Stamps. I use them all the time. I've got two sets here. That's them there. So now it's, um, what was the saying? You are capable of amazing things. Express yourself, express yourself. Where is the stamp? There it is. So we need some fabric. I'll just put those in there while I've got them in my hand. We need some calico. We need something to stamp on that has a bit of give, a bit of softness, like a book, which we're going to use that. Put the stamp on that bit of ink and let's see if we can get a better give it a moment to allow the ink to seep into the fabric that's better look at that 
might do another one because it doesn't hurt to have some spare in the little box. Oh, so that didn't work. That's good. We'll do one more. Okay. Should clean that stamp off. Let's get that excess ink off and pop it all away. And I need to check that I haven't got any ink on my fingers because we are working with fabric and it can go bad real quick. Let's just tear that out. That's much better. You can read it at least. And we've got some spares for another day. Okay, I need to make that a fraction smaller. Don't want it to overpower the pussycat. So I'm just going to notch it back a little bit and then it'll just tuck in there at the bottom. That's it. We'll get a little bit of the red from the pink and we'll stitch that into position and that will probably pull us up for the day so I've made three videos three hours I've been mucking around with this cover which is three days in your world so it's time to now start my day just bring that up a fraction I might sneak the knot in under there. I might even overcast stitch it. That'd be another stitch difference. Look cute. Doesn't hurt to have a few inspiring little words in amongst our journals for people. Just never know, there might be a day they pick it up and feel a little little flat and there'll be this little comment on a page that you've put and it might just make them feel good. Especially kids. I don't think we really know what goes on in their world half the time, do we? It can be tough out there for them. Okay, just going to overcast stitch all the way along. Lovely. Straight down that side. This will help tie it all into that cover as well with a bit of patching and these little elements appear and probably will stitch a doily on the back there is what I'm thinking. But at the moment, I'm going to run out of time. So this is a good effort. We've made a the start of an enclosure. I'll have to go hunting for something to use as the enclosure. But I have a feeling we'll make something out of fabric. Use the sewing machine to reinforce it just so we know it's nice and strong. So I'm thinking along the lines of a strap, maybe half an inch, just enough to be thick enough, but not too bulky. And I think then we'll be very close to actually adhering all of these elements to the bag itself. 
but we'll see. I didn't think I was doing this when I started the video. I didn't know what I was doing actually, I was just stitching. So, oops, I've got stitches that have come through on the other side, so back it up. Just need to redo this little bit again. I'll come through the other side again. Move that fabric out of the way. That would help. There we go. Now we're away again. All right. Lovely. This will be cute. Oh, I've caught the fabric. My goodness. All I want to do is three more stitches and I'm done. But no, each stitch is posing to be difficult. It's because I'm rushing. I'm not rushing. I can hear breakfast plates clinking and my tummy has started rumbling. It's like an audio cue. You hear the fridge door open, you immediately start thinking about snacks. That's pretty good. That's back where we started. Now I'm just gonna bring that needle through back to where my knot is and knot it off. Like so. Okay, lovely. We have ourselves the start of a tab enclosure, which I'm really liking. And that pussycat has been stamped and floating around in my box of tricks for so long. Look at the mess. So we've got our closure, our cover, and a pocket ready to go. We're getting there, guys. That's going to look super cool on there. Bringing that whole thing around to the front. Mm. Love it. Give or take a bit of a trim and a tidy up and a, a snip or two. And then we've got our pocket for the inside. Love it. Okay, guys, I'll leave it at that. And I'll probably do another video tomorrow morning um, because my day has begun. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.